morning. Welcome to ANZ News. It's Monday the 28th of September, edging closer to the end of the month. Today we're talking gold and silver and six forces to propel pricing upwards. News is filtering through that the Fed may have stepped back from the plate and markets got very jittery last week. Today we share the latest excellent insights from Crescat, whose investment insight just saw them make the top of Bloomberg News's hedge fund monthly performance table for the third straight month and fourth month this year. So they're worth listening to. They believe we are still in the early days of a secular bull market in gold and silver and that this correction is an ideal dip buying opportunity. This from them. The reckoning is upon us. Decades of fiscal profligacy are culminating in an explosion of government debt that is poised to bring simmering monetary debasement to a boiling point. Central bank interventions have aided and abetted reckless government spending that has obfuscated poorly underlying organic growth fundamentals. Instead of laying the groundwork for future real economic growth, monetary authorities have fostered a euphoric investment environment with delusional asset valuations. Paradoxically, we are past the point of no return where the stimulative policies that have created this frenzy are the death knell for the economy. The world is suffering from a debt overdose. It, is now, it must now face the inevitability of collapsing financial asset prices and synchronised fiat currency devaluation. In the US, we have recently seen a precipitous increase in government deficits to World War II levels, which are now accompanied by a significant decline in the trade balance. The shrinkage in net exports strongly suggests that a deep new slump in the current account is underway. Based on Crescat's estimates, the US twin deficit is on track to reach over 25% of nominal GDP, which should soon be the worst level ever expected and reported. Check out these next charts here. Twin deficits. Bam, that's a very, very vertical line downwards for 2020. Fortunately, the severity of these long-standing macro imbalances helps set the stage for an incredibly optimistic outlook for precious metals, especially the relative to equity markets. In the chart we show next, we can see a clear relationship between the twin deficits inverted, and the gold to S&P 500 ratio. During times of fiscal disorder, monetary metals tends to outperform overall stocks, which suggests that a significant move in this ratio is still ahead of us. Let us not forget that this time around, policymakers are also fighting deflation, tooth and nail, the necessary expansion of the monetary base to suppress interest rates and, there, and thereby create a negative and declining real interest environment could serve as a major tailwind for the gold to S&P 500 ratio to continue to rise. This chart here showing the twin deficits versus gold to S&P 500 ratio. It's the opposite, massive vertical incline. By the end of 2021, $8.5 trillion of US treasuries, treasuries will be maturing. And at the current macro conditions, the US government will have no option but to roll over its debt obligations. Consequently, this will likely cause a shift in the role of monetary policy. Allow us to elaborate. Foreign investors now own the lowest percentage of outstanding US government securities in 20 years. Historically, they funded over 50% of all marketable treasury securities. Today, that number has dropped to 35%. The Federal Reserve, meanwhile, has increasingly become the buyer of last resort, and it now owns a record 22% of all marketable treasuries. <clears throat> This conversion of ownership is particularly dangerous and appears irreversible. Given the current record government debt to GDP, high unemployment and large budget deficit, we expect the Fed to monetize the government's debt burdens at the highest rate ever from now through 2021. To reiterate our views from prior letters, over-indebtedness and the need for further monetary expansion is a global phenomenon that we believe will lead to the value destruction of all fiat currencies relative to gold and not just the US dollar. This next chart here showing US Treasury holdings, percentage of ownership of marketable securities. Policymakers are indeed hamstrung. The dependence on extreme monetary policies to maintain the stability of financial markets has become a key part in every central bank mandate. What is puzzling, however, is the fact that asset prices have never been so detached from underlying fundamentals. US households are now worth over six times today's GDP a number far higher than any other Fed-induced asset bubble, including both the dot-com mania in 2000 and the housing bubble that preceded the 2008 global financial crisis. 
today's excesses are anything but business cycle low behavior. It is quite the opposite. We are still at a major asset bubble peak. Meanwhile, the economy is already in a recession, one that is predestined to linger based on our macro analysis. As we have seen throughout history, the unwinding process from absurd asset valuations leads to real damage in the overall economy. Asset bubbles always burst. There is a business cycle and it is intertwined with security prices. Today, the two have diverged in the short term in a perverse and unsustainable way based on massive raw speculation and there will be a reckoning. There's a chart here showing US household wealth to GDP. There is only one way out, and that's monetary debasement. The overarching message from central banks remains consistent. None of them can sustainably afford having a strong currency. The setup of artificially low rates combined with ballooning fiscal deficits, extreme monetary dilution, and inflated risky assets creates, in our view, a veritable utopia for gold and silver. We are in a debt trap globally. Monetary debasement is unavoidable. unavoidable. Fed balance sheet expansion set to resume to new record levels. In the past several days, it seems the combination of gold bulls, stock market bulls, and dollar bears are getting nervous that the Fed balance sheet expansion has stalled since its peak in early June. In our analysis, Fed liquidity injections have been the number one driver for gold since the Fed's quantitative tightening experiment in 2018, and the repo crisis, which pivoted back to quantitative easing in late 2019, shown in this next chart. We believe that there are at least six structural forces that will pressure the Fed to further expand its balance sheet at new record levels and propel undervalued gold and silver prices much higher in the near term. We'll talk about these six points just here. First point, the stock market bubble bursts and the Fed must intervene. Point two, the Treasury needs the money and the Fed must intervene. 8.5 trillion in Treasuries coming due by year end 2021 and a record budget deficit that must be funded. Point three, left to their own devices, interest rates start rising and the Fed must intervene. Point four, unemployment remains too high and the Fed must intervene. Point five, inflation remains too low and the Fed must intervene. And point six, the dollar keeps strengthening versus other fiat currencies and the Fed must intervene. In our strong view, there is a much needed correction in gold to shake out the weak hands. We strongly believe it's an excellent buying opportunity in what is still the very early stages of a new secular bull market for precious metals. Big article there from Crestcat. Thanks for listening. Take your time to check out those charts, especially if you're listening via audio. Just press pause and you can check them out in more detail. Remember, you can jump over to ainsleybullion.com.au for all of our gold and silver products and read any of our other news articles as well. Ainsley Wealth to check out our cryptocurrency products and goldsilverstandard.com for our gold and silver backed cryptocurrency built by Ainsley. And again, welcome to the week. I've got a feeling it's going to be a volatile one, so sit back and enjoy and we'll catch you tomorrow for more news.